Hi, this is Bill Raymond, and in my quest to upgrade my site to Jekyll, I'm now covering working with themes. Here's my current website. You can see it's pretty basic. It just has a logo, a little bit about my company, and I even have a little blog here. And inside that blog, I have writing, which has not been updated for a long time. I do a lot of writing, but I get really frustrated because I'm using WordPress and look at all these updates that need to happen. It says WordPress needs to be updated. There's 27 different updates here. Very frequently, those updates don't always work properly. And I have to go through all these updates before I can even post a blog. So I'm fairly frustrated by the whole situation. And that's why I'm moving to just a simple GitHub pages site using Jekyll. Now I am not going to try and recreate my website exactly as you've seen it here, but I am going to try and do the bulk of what I have on the site in Jekyll. So what I've done so far is I've created a GitHub repo and I've called it Cameramass website. I've put the logo here at the top. I'm sorry, the logo, the uh, link to it here at the top so that I can easily access the page. You can see I did some of the branding already. And of course, in Visual Studio Code, I already have everything set up, including making some minor changes to the config.yaml file. These are all things that I demonstrated in the previous video. So if you did not see that, now's the time to go and check it out before you continue. From here on in, I'm going to be talking about new topics. Before we get started, you should know that when you create a brand new Jekyll site, by default, it uses what's called the Minima theme. This is what ships with Jekyll. And you can find the Minima theme on GitHub. But one of the nice things that it has is it's a responsive site. So it kind of centers all of your content in the center of the page, has a menu bar across the top. And as you can see here, if I were to move this, it automatically will refine itself for smaller devices, including giving you the hamburger menu if the device is pretty small. So this is actually a good start for a theme. Now here's what I want to point out. If I come over here to this page, this is pages.github.com slash themes, you can see that GitHub only supports a certain list of themes. This doesn't mean you can't use other themes, but these are the ones that GitHub supports. So if you want to use one, I suggest you start with this. You can go ahead and click on each one, and you'll notice that each one has a GitHub repository, and each one has a link that shows you what the theme will look like. Now, I am going to point out that if you go to jekyllrb.com slash docs slash themes, there's also a theme directory. Now, I don't know that Jekyll actually supports these. I think these are just common directories of themes. So here, for example, is the Jamstack themes.dev. You can see there's a whole bunch of themes here. And finally, you should also know that some of these themes use what's called plugins. Now, I mentioned before that I'm using WordPress and I kind of get done with all the updates that I need to make with plugins. Plugins in Jekyll sometimes might need updates, but they're actually pretty straightforward and I don't think that you have to, if you will, stay on top of them month to month. But it does support plugins and you can see here on this page on help.github.com, it actually lists the plugins that GitHub supports. So you have to be careful here. You could pick a theme that uses Jekyll plugins that GitHub does not support. There's ways around using themes that GitHub doesn't support, and there's ways around using plugins that GitHub doesn't support. But all of that said, it's very important to know that if you ever run into a problem and you contact GitHub, they may or may not be able to help you if you're going outside of these boundaries. Now, when you look at this theme, you can see it is pretty basic, but that doesn't mean that you can't modify it. As a matter of fact, you can make it look however you want. I'm starting with this theme for one reason, because I'm an occasional developer. I'm not really trying to get myself into the business of creating a website from scratch. 
I'm going to use the basic scaffolding that Jekyll provided to me, and I'm going to build on top of it. As you saw in the previous video, you create a new Jekyll site by typing Jekyll new and then the path name. What it does is it automatically creates a Jekyll website for you, including the blog, and it uses the minima theme. But what it's really doing is pointing to the minima theme. This is what's called a gem-based theme. So basically the idea here is the developers can make changes to the theme and then your site can automatically make use of it instead of, let's say, having to reinstall a theme every single time someone makes a change. The great thing about gem-based themes is that you get the latest and greatest updates. So if there's a security fix or if there's some new change that improves the website look and feel, I get that for free automatically. And I don't need to manage the code. So that's some of the benefits. On the downside, though, that update could break your site because you're probably not going to just use the default that everything comes with. You're probably going to modify the site to make it look and feel the way you want it to. So that latest and greatest update could actually break your code. The other thing is that if you want to tailor the theme, you can do that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. However, you are going to have to override the base theme. So basically, you're disconnecting theme files and using your own code. Here's our website running on GitHub. You can see it's running on github.io here. And you can see it says posts with welcome to Jekyll. And if I had multiple posts, it would list them here. It also has a subscribe via RSS. That's an uh, RSS feed. Now let's come over here and take a look at the config.yml file, the config.yaml file. Here is the minima theme. And here's a plugin called Jekyll feed that allows this RSS feed function to work. Now, okay, so we have this minima theme, and I know that this is the index page, index.html, because we're at github.io slash cameramash website with no URL. So that's the index.html file. So the way this works is you first set up a markdown file, and you tell it what the layout should be. And here's index.markdown. And you can see that none of that posts stuff is here. So how do I see all of this? Well, one way to do that is to go to the terminal menu and type bundle exec Jekyll build. And watch up here, a brand new folder got created, directory got created called underscore site. And if I take a look at that, I see an index.html page. And you can see all the details over here on the left are on the right-hand side of the page. As a matter of fact, if I right-click on this page and choose View Page Source, these two files will be exactly alike. However, one of the confusing things is, how did all of this content get here in the first place? Well, it's actually in this home layout file, but we can't see that because remember, by default, we're using a gem-based theme. So anytime we build our site, Jekyll's going out and finding the minima theme and applying that to our site. So let's go ahead and look at how we can see that. I'm going to come over here and type open dollar sign open paren bundle bundle info dash dash path, minima, n per n. And this is different for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So look in the description, and I'll provide that command line there. And now you can see there's a gems folder. And inside that gems folder, you'll find minima. And here are a bunch of files. What I'm going to do is look, out layout, look at layouts. Because remember, layout home, there is layout home. And if I were to just open this in the browser, you can see there's the page title, okay? Page title, you can see it lists out all the posts with the title posts, okay? So basically, this is what's defining how we're going to build that index page. But what if I don't want the index page to look like that? What if I want the home page to look different? Well, what I can do is over in my 
folder structure for my site, I could create an underscore layouts directory and I can add a home.html file. So I could just create that right here. And that home.html file that I create will overwrite this one. All the other files will remain intact. And when we rebuild the Jekyll site, it'll just skip over home.html. But in my case, what I'm going to do is I kind of want to be able to play around with any of these things. So I'm going to make what's probably kind of a harsh decision, which is to take all of these files and bring them over to my project. Since I have opted to just use this Minima theme by myself and not get any updates, there's two things that I need to do. One is I need to go to the config.yml file and I need to remove this theme Minima here. So put a hashtag next to it and just above it, I'll do another hashtag and say uh, removed uh, Minima theme as it is now a regular theme because we're no longer using a gem-based theme. We're using what Jekyll likes to term a regular theme. I'll actually copy this text because I'll want it again. So now I'll go to the gem file and you'll see that's also mentioned here, gem minima. We'll do a hashtag in front of that and paste that text again. Now I wanna save both of these files and I'll come down to the terminal window and here I'll type bundle update. I'll go ahead and clear this and then I'll go ahead and type bundle exec Jekyll serve. And this is so we can test it out and make sure that it works. You'll notice that the site will get built up here. There it is. You can see there is a new site and now we also have a URL to go to. Remember the URL that's up right now is github.io. So this is just our local site. So I'll go ahead and can command click on that and you can see it still looks great. So I think we're all set now and we're using the local theme and we're not using the, if you will, the remote uh, theme of Minima. Let's go ahead and do some last steps here. First, I'm gonna go ahead and commit this and say updated to regular theme. And once that's committed, I'll sync that up to GitHub. And then in just a moment, we'll go to GitHub and see if our change took. Okay, so here we are in GitHub. You can see there's our new theme files. So the includes, the layouts, the SAS folder. And we'll go ahead and click on the URL just to make sure that it's running. And it is. Also, by the way, just a reminder, if you haven't watched any of my videos before, refresh the page first, just to be sure. And then I'll just go ahead and click around and do some manual testing just to be sure that it works. And it certainly looks like it is. Great. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good about my site and I have a lot more to do. I have to brand it with my logo. I have to change some of the color schemes, things like that. But I'll keep plugging away at that and I'll create more videos as I go. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more like this, please like, comment, and click the bell to support my channel.